the top story right now, the West Bengal governor, Jagdeep Dhankar, will be the ruling NDA's candidate for the post of Vice President of India. The decision was taken at the BJP's parliamentary board meeting at its Delhi headquarters on Saturday evening. Prime Minister Modi, along with several top leaders like the Union Home Minister Amit Shah, the Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, the Union Minister Nitin Gadkari and the Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan were present at the meet. कई नाम हमारे पास आए जिन पर चर्चा हुई बड़ी वृहद चर्चा हुई सभी दृष्टि से चर्चा में समाज के दृष्टि से देश की आवश्यकता बाकी सारी चीज़ों को देख करके सभी नामों पर बड़ा गौर किया गया लेकिन सभी नामों पर गौर करने के बाद हम सब लोग और भारतीय जनता पार्टी की संसदीय बोर्ड इस निष्कर्ष पर पहुँची है कि उपराष्ट्रपति पद के लिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी और एनडीए के प्रत्याशी के रूप में हमारे किसान पुत्र श्री जगदीप धनखड़ जी को हम उपराष्ट्रपति पद के लिए अपना प्रत्याशी के रूप में घोषित करते हैं and all eyes were on the bjp to see whose name they would nominate for this post uh, why was mr dhankar chosen uh, when was mr dhankar chosen let's go across to akshay uh, dongre for more on this uh, uh, akshay of course mr dhankar has uh, been in the headlines uh, more recently for his prickly relationship with the opposition leader the west bengal chief minister uh, mamta banerji since taking over as governor in uh, uh, 2019 well absolutely absolutely sara in fact uh, mr dhankar and uh, 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 ms mamta banerjee's uh, rivalry in in the state of uh, west bengal has been quite popular we have seen that on many occasions the trinmool congress uh, has been accusing mr dhankar of being an agent of the bharatiya janata party of in fact trying to saffronize the state of west bengal and these have been the allegation that were leveled not just by uh, some ordinary leaders of the trinmool congress but by a uh, uh, chief minister of west bengal as well mamta banerjee on several occasions several issues we have seen uh, jagdeep dhankar has in fact uh, uh, accused uh, the mamta mamta banerjee government of in fact violating law and order situation violating uh, laws in the state uh, and and uh, trying to target the bjp workers in the state bjp cadre in the state so this clearly there clearly has been division between the opinions of of uh, uh, the the governor of west bengal and the chief minister and they have been at odds on several occasion and surprisingly it was just yesterday when uh, before a day before the announcement came by the bjp uh, uh, mr jagdish dhankar had in fact met uh, mamta banerjee along with the chief minister of assam who is also considered the point person of bjp in the state in the in the entire region of northeast so that in fact was uh, a hint uh, that he gave uh, as far as his upcoming innings in politics is concerned and uh, akshay uh, given the numbers that the bjp has in both houses these uh, their candidate is not expected to face any serious opposition it's supposed to go ahead uh, as planned but that said uh, then the strategy behind picking uh, mr dhankar uh, wasn't so much about whether he, he could pass through you know the opposition's uh, opposition but perhaps for other reasons what are the other reasons for which he uh, uh, has been picked by the bjp well while while many would say that uh, mr dhankar has been very useful for the bharatiya janata party as far as keeping a check on the west bengal uh, chief minister is concerned while he was the governor uh, his his cho uh, the choice of mr dhankar as the vice president is very 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 strategic for the bharatiya janata party we have seen that jp nadda while announcing his name also said and he said that uh, a kisan putra son of a farmer so that is uh, what uh, the bjp is trying to achieve uh, we have seen that uh, during the farmers agitation uh, ja jhart community in fact was in fact very angry angry with the bharatiya janata party we have seen uh, in in either in the state of haryana or in the state of uttar pradesh we have seen the jhart community was extremely angry with with the central leadership and the way they brought in the farm laws so that was one content uh, uh, one point of content as far as the jhart community is concerned and that despite that the jhart community voted uh, overwhelmingly in in the up elections in favor of the bharatiya janata party in jhart belt bjp had uh, several gains in several 
central regions. So uh, that perhaps is also the reason that uh, to bolster that image of a pro farmer, uh, to bolster a pro farmer image, BJP has chosen Mr. Dhankar. And uh, also one of the very important point in the choice of of this particular name uh, of of Mr. Jagdish Dhankar is the upcoming elections in the state of Rajasthan. Mr. Dhankar is from Rajasthan. He is from Jat community, Jat uh, Jat's own uh, sizable population in the state of Rajasthan. They uh, they hold political significance in the state and uh, the vice president coming in from the state of Rajasthan is certainly uh, one thing that the BJP expects should turn into into votes as well for the party and you have rightly mentioned that the number of votes uh, votes the BJP has be it in the Rajya Sabha or in Lok Sabha or the MLA that it has across the country it uh, Mr. Dhankar is not going to face a serious opposition as far as his upcoming elections is concerned so if he wins the vice presidential polls uh, it is certainly going to provide some boost to the BJP in the state of Rajasthan all right Akshay Longre reporting on the big story at this hour thank you for uh, that update Meanwhile, Congress leader Ahmed Patel, who died two years ago, plotted against Prime Minister Modi with, along with the arrested activist Tista Setalwad following the 2002 Gujarat riots. That is what the Gujarat State Police said on Saturday in a charge that has been strongly refuted by the Congress party and Mr. Patel's family. The opposing, opposing the activist Tista Setalwad's request for bail, a special investigating team of the Gujarat police told a court that she was part of a larger conspiracy to dismiss the BJP government in Gujarat, led by the then Chief Minister Narendra Modi, at the instance of Ahmed Patel. Mr. Patel was political advisor to the Congress Chief Sonia Gandhi at the time. He succumbed to COVID in November 2020. Two years after his death, veteran Congress leader Ahmed Patel has been accused by the Congress SIT of hatching a conspiracy to destabilize the then Gujarat government led by Narendra Modi. They allege activist Tista Setalwar acted at his behest to implicate innocent people in the 2002 Gujarat riots. The SIT has alleged that ex-Gujarat Chief Minister Modi was falsely framed. Ahmed Patel conspired against ex-Chief Minister Modi in 2002, Gujarat riots case. Ahmed Patel and Setalwad plotted to frame Modi. Tista Setalwad got 30 lakh from Ahmed Patel. SIT cites the witness statements in affidavit to court as Gujarat police opposes Tista Setalwad's bail plea. Ahmed Patel to matra ek naam hai. The driving force behind Ahmed Patel was his boss, Sonia Gandhi. नाम अहमद पटेल काम सोनिया जी इसलिए अपने मुख्य राजनीतिक सचेतक अपने मुख्य पॉलिटिकल एडवाइजर अहमद पटेल के माध्यम से सोनिया जी ने गुजरात के छवि को धूमिल करने की चेष्टा की अहमद पटेल जी के माध्यम से सोनिया जी ने नरेंद्र मोदी जी को घेरने की चेष्टा की इन हार्ड हिटिंग स्टेटमेंट द कांग्रेस सेड this was a part of the Prime Minister's systematic strategy to absolve himself of any responsibility for the communal carnage unleashed when he was Chief Minister of Gujarat in 2002. People of India, people of Gujarat are intelligent enough to realize that Narendra Modi has nothing to show as his achievement. Therefore, he hides behind such stories. Ahmed Patel's daughter, Mumtaz Patel, questioned the timing. After getting a clean chit from the Supreme Court, the Gujarat SIT has arrested its former police officer Sri Kumar, Tista Setalwad and Sanjeev Bhatt for allegedly fabricating evidence to frame innocent people in Gujarat riots cases. NDTV Bureau Report. And political opposition is translating into hostility, which is not a sign of a healthy democracy, the Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana, said speaking at an event on Saturday. He also said that there used to be mutual respect between the government and the opposition which is diminishing adding that the issues of hasty and indiscriminate arrests difficulty in obtaining bail and prolonged incarceration of under trials all of these were marked as urgent issues by the chief justice in these comments made on saturday that assume huge significance given the recent events in the news cycle So there was joy and despair as the, those uh, first CUET exams were held and uh, there was going to be no retest 
for those uh, students who missed their exams, the university panel chief uh, has announced. So what happens to those students who missed those exams, who reach the examination center only to find that no test was being conducted at that center? NDTV spoke with some of them. We have students here who reached at an examination center and the examination center was closed. It reads in their admit card that a, a technical institute in Pitampura area, in Rohini area rather, uh, was their examination center. When they reached there, there was no examination center and they could not take part in the exam. And as of now, no retest has been in fact announced by either UGC or the national testing agencies. What happened with you guys? Please tell you yourself. Uh, what exactly happened uh, when you when you reached the examination center? What did you see? What did you find there? When we reached the examination center, first of all, the security guards were not allow allowing us to enter the gate, to enter the uh, institute, and uh, they misbehaved, and uh, they shouted, and uh, and when uh, we uh, when we asked them to call the management and mm. call uh, uh, supervisor or leader, so they uh, called them, they called him, and uh, he he misbehaved and he shouted and he said that we don't care about your exam uh, there is no exam to be conducted or हमारे पास सिर्फ आधा घंटा था आधा घंटे में हमारा एग्जाम स्टार्ट होने वाला था और हमारा ग्रेटर नोएडा रोहिणी से लगभग 2.5 किलोमीटर 2.5 आर्स का डिस्टेंस है ढाई से तीन घंटे का सर आप बच्चे के साथ ही हाँ जी मैं फादर हूँ सर इसका फादर हूँ मैं सर हम जब वहाँ पे पहुँचे हमें बताया गया कहते जी यहाँ पे कोई भी एनटीए का एग्जाम कंडक्ट नहीं किया जा रहा उसके बाद में हमने फिर जब गार्ड से हमने बहुत रिक्वेस्ट करी उसके बाद उन्होंने मैनेजमेंट के एक पर्सन को बुलाया उन्होंने बाहर आके उन्होंने यही बोला कहते जी हमारे यहाँ पे कोई एग्जाम कंडक्ट नहीं हो रहा आप यहाँ से चले जाइए अब सर ऐसा है देखिए दो बजे बच्चे आ रहे हैं तीन बजे उनका एग्जाम है आधे घंटे में या पौने घंटे में बच्चा कैसे ग्रेटर नोएडा 45 किलोमीटर जो कम से कम भी नियर ऊपर 45 से 50 साठ किलोमीटर पड़ता है और वो भी पीक आर्स के बीच में जब हमने गूगल पे सर्च किया है उसके ऊपर एक मिनट का टाइम आ रहा है तीन घंटे तीन घंटे का टाइम आ रहा है हम बताइए हम कैसे एग्जाम दे सकते हैं and flood waters have begun to recede in the most uh, flood affected areas of Gujarat as rains have stopped in several of these areas. However, NDRF teams have been kept on standby due to a heavy rain alert, especially in eight districts. This school on the outskirts of Bilimora town in Naksari district of Gujarat is still reeling from the effect of the flood. Yesterday water entered the school building and damaged benches and blackboards. A day later the school ground and the main gate is still flooded. The headmaster says this is the worst flood since 2011. <laughs> तो पूरी तरीके से स्पेट में था हाँ बहुत पानी था उसमें वो वो पानी सीधा यहाँ आ सकता है और ये अंबिका नदी का भी पानी आया है दोनों इन सौराष्ट्र टू द सेम सिचुएशन विद डैम्स ओवरफ्लोइंग एंड रीचिंग फुल कैपेसिटी द वेरी डैम लोकेटेड इन द राजकोट डिस्ट्रिक्ट ओवरफ्लोड आफ्टर रिसीविंग वेरी हैवी रेनफॉल हवेवर इवन विथ फ्लड वॉटर्स रिसीविंग एन डी आर एफ टीम बीन कैप्ट ऑन स्टैंड बाई एस देर इज अ फोकास्ट फॉर मोर रेन क्योंकि यहाँ पानी का जल स्तर अचानक बढ़ता है क्योंकि यहाँ एक औरंगा नदी है जो कि उसका जल स्तर बहुत तेज़ी से बढ़ता है बिकॉज यहाँ से अप्रोक्स 75 किलोमीटर्स धर्मपुर पहाड़ी है वहाँ पे क्या होता है कि अगर वहाँ पे रेनफॉल बहुत ज़्यादा अगर होता है तो सीधे फ्लोर में वहाँ से पानी पहाड़ी से नीचे आता है और एक ये बहुत बड़ा विकराल रूप ले लेती है जिसका कि सबको भुगतना पड़ता है 54 people have died so far and 11 deaths have occurred in the last 24 hours. The state government says 800 people have been rescued in 24 hours. Heavy rainfall in Dang district and nearby hilly areas reached the lower areas in Navsari and Valsad very fast. And it was the state of alert that prevented more damage and loss of lives. As the water recedes, the administration says several teams are out to conduct surveys of the damage caused by these floods. Rivers were flowing over 20 feet above the danger level. 
जब ये बाढ़ आई तो तीनों नदियों में एक साथ चौदह तारीख के दिन तीनों नदियाँ फ्लडेड थीं अभी वो पानी निकल रहा है और नबी सभी नदियाँ अपने सामान्य लेवल पर आ गई हैं जो नदी सबसे ज़्यादा जिसने लोगों को प्रभावित किया वो पूना और अंबिका रिवर थी पूना नदी का जो खतरे का लेवल है वो तेईस फिट है उस दिन वो थर्टी फोर पे लगभग पहुंच गई थी The administration says surveys are on and no damage has been reported in ongoing infrastructure projects like the bullet train project due to the flood situation. तो वहाँ पे अर्थवर्क है परमानेंट सेटलमेंट को कोई डैमेज नहीं हुआ है लेकिन जो अर्थवर्क है जहाँ आप उसे अर्थ मतलब मिट्टी का संग्रह कर रहे थे बालू का संग्रह कर रहे थे तो वहाँ पे जरूर कुछ नुकसान है पर वो टेम्प्ररी नुकसान है फ्लड वाटर्स आर रिसीडिंग इन गुजरात बट एज यू कैन सी इट विल टेक सम टाइम फॉर दिस एंटायर फ्लड वाटर टू ड्रेन आउट दिस इज द सिचुएशन इवन वेन द सन इज आउट हियर इन नवसारी वी आर वेरी क्लोज टू बिलिमोरा दिस that you see behind me is a school and even as the flood waters recede over the next two days one hopes normalcy will return by monday with camera person praveen ji rohit in bilimora gujarat saurabh gupta ndtv Welcome back. Now the Sri Lankan Parliament met in a brief session on Saturday to announce a vacancy in the presidency following the resignation of Gotabaya Rajapaksa. Sri Lanka's acting president Ranil Wickremesinghe and the main oppos opposition leader Sajit Premadasa are among the four leaders who have joined the race to become the country's next president. He was portraying that he was a big guy that he could bring help bring international aid but he was failed it he doesn't have the mandate to be uh, the acting president and he should resign after days of protest and uncertainty finally a formal announcement in parliament of gotabaya rajpaksa's resignation as president and the date a new president will be elected on Wednesday the sri lankan parliament has 224 seats and the top four contenders for the post of president are ranil wickremesinghe the acting president from the unp sajit premadasa leader of opposition from the sjb dalas alaha peruma a former journalist and opposition leader anura kumara disanayake from the npp <laughs> however at the anti government protest site gota gogama adjacent to the old parliament in golface green protesters say the momentum will continue until ranil wickremesinghe is ousted the next step of uh, the protesters uh, they say that they're going to change uh, gota gogama the all the branches across colombo to ranil gogama which means their um, you know important next step is going to be that ensuring that ranil wickremesinghe does not stay in power so these are certain strategies that are being right now worked out by uh, the protesters here in uh, sri lanka but on the other hand we understand the discussions will begin in a short while uh, from now with got to you know the popular names that are doing runs for the prime ministerial post reporting outside old parliament in colombo with camera person kumar shrija for ndtv all this while we have seen how especially protesters take out in the streets and uh, entire colombo reverberating with one slogan gota go home now after mr ronald wickremesinghe has taken over as the acting president we hear slogans being shouted asking ronald to leave uh, go out of power asking him to go home in fact we understand from several of the protesters this these such protests will only intensify in the next few days it's important to remember that ranil will continue as the acting pre uh, president for the next few days until a new president sri lanka gets but it's also important to understand that one un you know unpopular very unpopular name that is actually uh, you know doing the rounds for the president's post is of course of mr ranil wickremesinghe and people say at the moment citizens say that they also need mr ranil to go home because they want clearly to oust the corrupt leaders and that these protesters say if they could manage to oust mr mahinda go to my rajpaksa just 
with peaceful protests. They say they will continue with such protests until Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe also leaves, uh, in fact, his seat. On this file, we've seen only Gota go protest, but now for the first time, after he's taken over as the acting president, this is the first protest. Are we going to see more? Okay. Um, we will probably be seeing more depending on what uh, the parliament will be deciding uh, after their vote that is supposed to have hap happened today. Uh, that being said, uh, the protest is to pressurize the ministers, the parliamentary ministers, in order for them to not vote Ranil as the acting president. I think that's, that's conspiracy. He just uh, try to cover by the constitu constitution, but this constitution also is uh, not, uh, uh, it is not, uh, um, it is, uh, I mean that it is, uh, uh, it is, it is some, some, uh, some, uh, uh, clauses of this constitution also not uh, uh, justified that that you, you you see so that is true that he he tried to uh, be, become a uh, president of sri lanka by uh, by some conspiracy